I don't play. play. Yo, Shot, this is serious, man. We gotta show these new jacks what time it is and let them know we ain't playing no games. Cause I'm DJ2 and we're coming correct now, in 88. Now, you know what I'm saying? Now, um, now, um. just 88 but the 80s this is the nothing sacred interview with mc shy d i'm maxwell silverhammer and i'm cruise control and we do have mc shy d here mc thank shy d thank you for coming on the show to, with us today oh yeah no doubt glad to be here man so first question i have out the gate where you been <laughs> well believe it or not i've been i've been here i've been around you know uh I just, uh, you know, fell back a little bit off the scene and, you know, just started concentrating on my second hobby that I love, which is DJing. So, you know, I'm in Atlanta DJing at a couple of spots out here in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, man. Well, it must be different to hear, like, what the kids are listening to now, rap-wise, as opposed to what you used to do. Oh, yeah, but, you know, I'm I'm cool with it. You know, we had our era. You know, now they got daytime, you know, and I ain't mad at nobody. You know, I kind of like this new shit. Huh. 
Well, hey, that's cool, man. That's, uh, <laughs> it, I don't know. It doesn't grab me as much, you know, but I guess that's just, I'm an old fuck, so what, what can I say? So <laughs> so that song uh, so that song started back, uh, basically, that was from 1988, that, that song? The first? Yeah, 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 I don't play. Yeah, that was uh, 88, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that was uh, my man DJ Toon, you know, legendary producer right now that, has, that discovered T.I. That was him on the track with me. Oh, oh wow. wow. Well, that was Mike Fresh, though. You talking about the guy talking in the background on the on the hooks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Toomp. That wasn't Mike Fresh. Oh, okay. I thought that was Mike Fresh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Now nah, that that was Toomp. Oh wow, man. So when when you got into this, you were like fifteen, weren't you? Nah, nah. I made my first record at nineteen. Uh, oh, okay. It was nineteen eighty five. Rap would never die. Okay. Okay. So then things were working right at Forsyth Records, and you went to Luke Records, man. How how was that? Oh, it, I mean, it was a big jump because, you know, Forsyth Records, don't get me wrong, you know, I definitely appreciate them giving me my first chance to get on wax. But, you know, when you got with Luke, you know, Luke, it was more exciting. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, two live crew, you know, they was stirring up controversy when they first came out mm -hmm. and I was part of that you know I got to travel around with that so like I say it was exciting for me too you know is that is that sound that like that like 1988 you know like the hey we want some you know hey we want that like, that like pussy that, that, hey, that sound is that like a certain a certain area of the country like is that from the Atlanta area like were you is that where you're originally from the uh so, so you're from Atlanta originally and that is like the sound of that area no, nah, I'm from New York City, believe it or not. Oh. That's from New York City. Yeah, I moved to Atlanta when I was 11. Oh, oh wow. wow. So, so that's that, yeah, like that booty shake music. So that must have been quite the the contrast. You know, you went from, you know, Melly Mel, Grandmaster Flash type stuff to all of a sudden the, the booty shake thing, man. How, how was that? Did you take a minute to get kind of used to it? And like, man, this isn't rap. No, nah, it was cool because, you know, down here in Atlanta, they dance, you know. That was the thing. So when rap really started making his noise out there, you know, we listened more to the Egyptian lover type music, the California stuff, the Pretty Tony stuff, you know, because down here in Atlanta, they used to like to dance. Like when the New York stuff come on, you know, people go sit down. But whenever they throw in Egypt, Egypt, or like I say, some uh, Pretty Tony music, you know, people get up and they be rocking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it does right. have that sound like that, that kind of like floating coast, like, like, uh, that groove, like dance sound, like um, is that such that that's like that out of that area? That's like that style of rap out of that area during that time, or yeah, well, uh, you know, basically, uh, all the the booty music, believe it or not, it came from Miami. You know what I'm saying? It didn't come from Atlanta. You know, Atlanta <clears throat> really wasn't making no noise at the time. Nobody was making records out of Atlanta. You know, so mm -hmm. basically, that bass music and booty music started up in Miami, you know what I'm saying? So basically I just got a I got a hold on to it, you know, and I started doing it. Yeah, and that's, huh. that's kinda of, kinda of spread out a little bit there. So um man. So That's uh you know I'm surprised though, because Africa Bambada is actually your cousin. Um I'm surprised he didn't put you on in music. Yeah, well basically, you know, I was kinda too young you know, like when they was doing their thing, when they first got started, so Sonic and them, I was mm. kind of real, real young. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, they was uh, they was in the projects doing it first, you know, before it got on wax. But by then, my family had packed up and moved down south. So he didn't really know what I was doing down this way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So you guys lost touch, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, uh. When Planet Rock came out, that came out in 81, but I was already down in Atlanta trying to make my little mark in the hip-hop scene down here, you know? <laughs> what was his reaction when you dropped something? Did he call you and was like, man, I heard you, or you got some shit out? Yeah, yeah, it was really, he was really shocked, you know, because word got back to New York that I was making records, so the whole New York was shocked. The whole project where I was from, Bronx River Project, everybody in the project was shocked, like, oh, shit. Pete made a record. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Man, that's crazy. That's uh, like I said. Then you did the thing with Luke. Were, were you were you there when they got with the whole controversy when they got arrested? Because you said you toured with them and everything. Yeah, yeah, I was there. Um, 
Well, I was getting away. You know, we was he was getting in trouble when I was still with him because a couple of shows we did, like we did some shows, and sometimes Mr. Mitch wouldn't show up. So I'd be the DJ. And one time we did a show in Louisiana. I think we was in uh, Lafayette, Louisiana. And when we got on stage, shit, the police handcuffed me and Fresh Kid Ice and Marquise, but Luke snuck out the front door. So, you know, like I say... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there when the controversy started, you know, but when the band in the USA and all that shit came, I was gone by then. So you got arrested. How did you get out, man? You know, did you just say, I'm, well, I'm not part of that crew? <laughs> nah, believe it or not, my dad was on tour with us, and my dad told the police, hey, he ain't even in this fucking group. He's filling in for the original DJ. So the police, they let me go, but they locked Marquise and uh, Fresh Kid Ice up. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then what does your dad do my dad cursed luke ass out you know he just my dad <laughs> told him when we got back to the hotel he was a coward for running out on us you know what i'm saying i mean hey this is your group man you know you supposed to be the first motherfucking handcuffs <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and uh here he is he sneaks out on you guys and there you did you know you did jail time for him you know yeah you know the um, so, you know, like I say, uh, that was the beginning, you know, of the controversy. So, like I say, I was definitely there. Wow. Wow. When did things go bad on Luke Records? When you were like, man, I got to get the fuck out of here. Well, basically, it was a money situation. Um, it was time for me to get paid after the Coming Correct in 88 album. He did the shit on the first album, the Gotta Be Tough album. Basically, he tried to send me some bullshit money, so... I called down to the record company and I told the girl, I said, yo, you tell Luke if he don't send me X amount of dollars, I'm not coming back to do another album. So maybe about three weeks later, I got the check in the mail. So that's when I took my ass back down there and I did the Come and Correct in 88 album. But after the Come and Correct in 88 album, it was time to get paid. He did the same thing. So this time when he paid me that little bit of money, I just took it and went and got a lawyer. Oh, wow. Oh. So you so you want you got actually you actually got did you did you get the amount of money you were supposed to get? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely got the money. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, a lot of these well, artists, you know, the lawyer, they, the lawyer, they're gonna take sixty percent of that shit. So I got some money though. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, because it seems like a lot of these people uh, when they you know they, they have issues with their record companies and they try to get their shit and they can't. So you had a so your contract was all set and good. So you actually got what you were expecting to get, of course, but you had to pay. Uh, pay some fees to some people so you didn't really get what you're supposed to get, in other words. <laughs> well, I mean, to me, I got it because I wasn't really expecting that kind of money. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was so only really was looking good. for about, a, yeah, I was looking for like $150,000. That's what I wanted, but shit, I got over like uh, five hundred and something thousand dollars. Nice, you man. know. So, yeah, wow. so it, it was all good. Uh, con it, conveniently, it was all good. so your album did really well, obviously, and that's why you're able to get more. Because, but he wasn't willing to pay you out that shit. Uh, conveniently, your shit was doing really well, and oh, I, I can't pay your shit for some reason. I wonder why that is. <laughs> so that's good, man. So yeah, got, yeah. So man. You got a lot of money yeah, out of that. So that was your first album. How many albums do you have out total? Well, I did two albums with Luke. I did uh, the Don't Sweat Me album with On Top Records, and then um, I started my own label, and I did uh, an album called Recognize, oh, and then I did an album called A Comeback when I got out of prison with Itchy Bone Records. See, that that's funny, too. I read that, that you did do some prison time, man. That's crazy, because I, I just couldn't picture you being going to prison. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, shit happens, you know, like when you're in them streets. See... I was in them streets, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't no rapper and hiding out and shit. You know, I was in the streets every night. So when you're out there in the streets, you know, you're going to have little confrontations when people come up with that bullshit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So a uh, situation came up where I had to I had to handle it or I wouldn't have been no good. My name wouldn't have been no good out there in the streets. So I went ahead and took care of my business. And how long were you in, how long were you in, uh, in prison for? Two years. Two years. So that was what, 90s, two, 2000s? When was that? It was 90. I shot the dude in 91 and got out in 93. Okay, oh. so that was... Man, you know, it's just crazy. Just because, you know, on your records, you seem so outgoing and friendly and, and happy-go-lucky. So, you know, I'm just thinking, like, MC Shy D shooting somebody? <laughs> That's crazy. 
Yeah, well, you know, I am exactly what you just said, but you know, um, this guy, believe it or not, that I shot, he was a, 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 a known criminal in the area where we stayed at, and everybody kind of feared this guy. You know, he's a big old guy, stayed locked up all his life, et cetera, et cetera. Make a long story short, I used to wait, I used to see the way he'd be bullying people, and I used to always say to myself, if he ever fuck with me, I'm going to do something to him. Wow. So my day came where he tried to fuck with me, and I did something to him. <laughs> and then he didn't fuck with anybody else anymore, did he? <laughs> or at least well, not. you know, believe it or not, it kind of changed him because, like, when I did that to him, then y'all wouldn't even believe it. I'm sitting in I'm sitting in a county jail waiting to get shipped off to prison, and they bring him in there. He done fucked around and shot somebody. <laughs> wow. It's so that, that just circular. goes to show you how how dangerous this dude was. But, like, when he went to prison that last time, he got out and he changed his life. You know, he turned, turned his life over to God, and, you know, he's doing real good now. You know, we see each other, you know. I mean, I'm still looking at him with one eye open and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With right. both eyes open because I still don't trust his ass. But, you know, I think when I shot him, I think I put a little fear in his heart. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. And then you see him in the in the county jail coming in on an on an arrest. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that was real crazy. You know? Like, wow. Hey, nice to see you again. <laughs> well, anyways, <laughs> uh, what, what's good for our next song? What's our next one? Uh, uh, Max? Get the fuck out my face, bitch! <laughs> Get the fuck out. Matt. That's probably that's exact. That's kind of appropriate. Get the fuck out my face, bitch! Uh, or I'll shoot you, and then we'll see each other in prison. Uh, so, so, wait. so what album is this off of that was on the Don't Sweat Me album believe it or not that I recorded with On Top Records Joey Boy what year did that come out that came out in 90 alright so this is from 1990's uh, Don't Sweat Me album Get the Fuck Out My Face Bitch we're here with MC Shy D and this is the Nothing Sacred Interview we'll be back after this song Let me talk about these hoes. What hoes? The ones with the tight ass clothes. Why they do it? They want you to spend your last. And after all of that, you won't get no ass. And if you are a guy with a real nice car, a BM, a Benz, or a Jaguar, they will try their best to impress. And wear a motherfucking little bitty ass dress. But I know what time it is in the place, so I'm telling that hoe to get the fuck out my face. Get the fuck out my face. I look like a goddamn sucker Yo, get the fuck out my face Bitch I'm shot D and I'm a slick motherfucker Get the fuck out my face Bitch Do I look like a goddamn duck Yo, get the fuck out my face Bitch Bitch, are you gonna fuck or what Yo, I'ma let my man side kick a few lines about Y'all bitches, y'all think you're slick You try to get the money but won't suck the dick And some won't suck or fuck but you're still in my face, trying to get that buck You bum ass bitch, I know the time cold Can't you tell, listen to my rhyme child D's not taking no shorts and don't even try to put the bike the shorts on Cause I was born to mop and wax And talk about your hoes with the true ass facts And I'm cooling in the place So punk bitch, get the fuck out my face Get the fuck out my face do I look like a goddamn sucker? Yo, get the fuck out my face, bitch! I'm shot D and I'm a slick motherfucker. Get the fuck out my face, bitch! Do I look like a goddamn duck? Yo, you get the fuck out my face, bitch! Bitch, are you gonna suck or what? I knew this girl who liked to be with me, Peter Jones, and not shot D. She used to come to my house and suck on Jimmy. Every time I see her now it's gimme, 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 gimme this, gimme that Soon as I walk in the place, I wanna take my dick and slap her in the motherfucking face She's a crack bitch, or a whack bitch Before I fuck her, I fuck a fat bitch Cause the fat bitch don't want my dough And I know she's not a material hoe But you are a big disgrace So material hoe, get the fuck out my face Get the fuck out my face do I look like a goddamn sucker? Yo, get the fuck out my face, bitch! I'm shot D and I'm a slick motherfucker. Yo, get the fuck out my face, bitch! Do I look like a goddamn duck? Yo, you get the fuck out my face, bitch! Bitch, are you gonna suck the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know all your hoes sitting back saying I can't stand shot D. Fuck y'all! Y'all ain't gave me.
me a dime, ain't gave me no pussy, ain't gave me shit. You know what I'm saying? So don't even talk that shit about me, cause y'all ain't giving me a motherfucking thing. If you fucking a fucking, you can be with me. Check this shit out. I'm a tibia hoe, but take all that you got and we'll fuck on the spot that she thinks she got. Money, a house, or a Benz. So she can go run and tell her friends that you a sucker and she got you in check. Cause her pussy is good and you won't neglect to write a check or give her your car. Bitch, get out my face, cause I'm not a star. I'm a wise, crazy motherfucker. Bitch, I'm not a lame, I'm not a sucker, I'm cooling and I don't smoke bass. So punk, bitch, get the fuck out my face. God damn it. Get the fuck out my face. Like a goddamn sucker Yo, get the fuck out my face Bitch I'm shot D and I'm a sick motherfucker Get the fuck out my face Bitch Do I look like a goddamn dumb Bitch Get the fuck out my face Bitch Bitch Are you gonna suck or fuck? What's up, ho? You ugly That was Get the fuck out my face, bitch from 1990s Don't Sweat Me Out. We are here with MC Shy D. Uh, I'm Max. I'm Cruise Control. We got Maxwell Silverham here. So, the, so that happened in 1990, and obviously you had a little bit of an interruption there in the early 90s. Rap was changing a shit ton back then, obviously, especially from the mid 80s to the uh, or late 80s to the early 90s. Um, you know, uh, not just with the with the uh, you know with the uh, two live crew shit, you know, uh, controversy, but just you know, the switch toward more mainstream and stuff. How did that affect you and, and what you were doing? Well, basically, uh, it hurted me a lot because, uh, you know, the party, the party type music we was making, I think it was kind of going underground. Like you said, the more commercial stuff, who was out? Tone Loke and uh, Young MC started coming out and crossing over to the white audience. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So... Uh. So yeah, so basically, like, you know, I was still more a battle rapper then. You know, I had my one crossover record, Shake It, but the other stuff that I had was kind of like battle rapping and stuff. So, you know, like I said, that kind of really fucked my career up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, and, and New Jack was big back then, around that, around that time. You know, all that New Jack swing type shit. Yeah, yeah, so New York, you know, like I said, I guess New York was making a little comeback, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So Teddy Riley and those guys were were kind of big. So you kind of had to sort of regroup a little bit, huh? Yeah, basically. But you know that New Jack type that wasn't my style. So basically, uh, I got locked up right on time and shit. You know what I'm saying? So I could miss <laughs> that era. <laughs> <laughs> so you went went in there and then came out and in '93. Obviously, the scene was was all about you know like Dre and Snoop Dogg and uh, it seemed like, like, I mean, popular stuff, of course, you know, like, um, oh. like the West Coast stuff was going on, was getting really big, um, at that time. Um, so what happened when you got out? Did you just go back to music or did you just start, did you try doing some other shit or, or just go right back? Well, into believe this? it or not, y'all, y'all wouldn't believe it. I mean, I mean, it's a, it's a funny story, but the young lady I was dealing with at the time, her dad, he had a contract with Delta for us cleaning up all the restrooms and stuff and office spaces oh so i got out and uh he gave me a job but uh i wasn't making but four dollars and 75 cents an hour so i just told myself man i gotta get back in the studio you know where i was locked up you know i wrote all these songs and stuff you know what i'm saying so i gotta get my ass back in the studio and try to make a comeback hmm. man so that's in 93 you dropped something i guess yeah, fucking four dollars yeah, seventy five cents. That'll that'll motivate you to get back in the studio right there. Shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, dro I, I dropped the album called The Comeback. Um, <clears throat> and um, I went and got a young producer by the name of DJ Smurf, and uh, he started doing the beats for me. So basically, I made the comeback and made a song called True to the Game. Yep. And it picked it picked up pretty good, you know, out here in the south and stuff. So I was back out there. Well, I like the sample you used, that shy sample. That yeah, that was Smurf idea. Yeah, he, he came up with the whole thing. Like I said, I just told him, I said, yo, what that happened, though, believe it or not, <clears throat> I knew I had to go away for a while. So what I did, I told Smurf I got to go do some time. 
I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna teach you how to work the SP1200, my drum machine. Work on this shit. When I get back, man, you know we'll get back into some music and stuff. So basically, while I was gone, he mastered the drum machine. So when I got out, he had he had a bunch of beats and stuff. And I just I was trying to do the work thing at first, but 475 wasn't doing it for me. So that's it forced me back into the music. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then you and then you came out with that. How'd that album do? Was that we were able to support yourself off it? Yeah, it was it was pretty good because I started doing a lot of shows again, so I was back on the road making money. So yeah, that that and then maybe shit, maybe seven eight months after that, you know, I won the lawsuit money, so everything was falling in place for me, you know. Oh yeah, nice. oh, cool. that would be nice, you know, like you can go to go from four four dollars and seventy five to four hundred and seventy five thousand. It's probably, yeah, <laughs> probably yeah, pretty so. good, man. That's good. That's good. So you got back. How much did you make? How much would you were you pulling in just from the tour, from the tour dates and shit? From like all the all the, uh, the the performances and stuff, and from the from the record sales. Like, would you say about you know how much a month probably? Well, shit. I mean, I was doing I was doing maybe six seven shows a month at twenty five hundred a show. So I was doing pretty good, you know. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So actually, where you make your money is not necessarily from album sales, but from, from touring, huh? Yeah, the record companies, well, back then, well, they got something called a 360 deal now, but back then, the record company really makes all the money off the record sales. You know, they give you a little small-ass check, and you make your money off touring. But now, they say with this 360 deal, the record company get all your money, merger, merchandising, part of your show money everything so they giving out crazy deals now for these young boys oh man see a lot of kids don't know that man and they think that still getting signed is the way nah these record companies they pimping the hell out these young artists but the artist is making so much money i mean you know the type of money these young guys are getting man fifty thousand a show that shit was unheard of when we was out Oh yeah, 50, 50 grand a show and doing six or seven, goddamn, yeah, yeah, that would do it, man. Yeah. But hell, shit, two thousand twenty five, twenty five, two point five a show, you're doing six or seven a month. That's that's still pulling in, uh, pulling in some money. I I could deal with that. Oh yeah. I could deal with that right now. Shit, I. <laughs> yeah, twenty five hundred uh, seven times a month. Oh shit. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Good, good yeah. fifteen, fifteen. Where y'all at? Y'all in Las Vegas? I'm in Las Vegas and he's in Oregon. I'm up in the Oregon, <laughs> up in the northwest up here. So yeah, it's uh. Y'all need y'all need to bring me out there for a show. I'm sure somebody know about my ass out there. <laughs> you know what, man? I will. Um, there's a guy that does a lot of that out here, uh, Donnie Menace, and uh, you know, I'll, maybe I'll talk to him. There was somebody else that I referred to him too, so I don't know what happened or how that went. But uh, I'll talk to him. I'll see what the deal is because it's for them. It's a lot of horrorcore acts and, and stuff like that. That's what, what he does. So you oh, know. he do the hardcore acts because yeah. Um, I just did a show last week. I was in uh, Victorville, California, and I was on a show with Two Live Crew, Debbie Deb, uh, Freestyle. It was like a a freestyle and old school rap artist show. It was about ten groups on the show last week. That was last Saturday in Victorville. Oh, that's like, uh, yeah, I know what you're saying, like Company B and, you know, all those guys. Yeah, Come yeah, that, them type, yeah, Debbie Deb, yeah, them kind of shows like that. I did one of them last week out there. Wow. Oh, Debbie wow. Deb's still performing, huh? Yeah, yeah, she, she's still out there. She like me, man. I wear about 300. She wear about 302. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, this putting on weight shit as you get older is a motherfucker, man. <laughs> yeah, it's rough, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm dealing it with so it now. Funny. <laughs> it was so funny, right? Because they came off the elevator, not trying to be funny, and it was this fine girl, but she was older. Then it was a young girl, then it was Debbie Deb. So automatically, my mind said to me, the fine girl is Debbie Deb. So I walked up to her, I was like, yo, you Debbie Deb? She's like, nah, she Debbie Deb. Then Debbie Deb said, nah, she Debbie Deb. But the young girl, so they were playing with me. So my mom was like, who is Debbie Deb? And they come out to be the big girl and shit. <laughs> More like li <laughs> the little Debbies. She likes two little Debbies too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's. Yeah, but she was sweet, man. She was a real fan, you know. She mm -hmm. told me she really liked my music because, you know, she was in Florida when I was doing my thing too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. So running into yeah, because she was, she, huh? You were with the two live crew. Was Luke there or no? Is he not with them? Anymore? Nah, it's 
believe it or not, the two live crew now, the new two live crew is Mr. Mitch, the DJ, and Brother Marquis. Oh, shit. Where's Fresh Shit Ice? He quit. Oh, I know he was doing some stuff with ICP, but, you know, I didn't realize he wasn't part of two live crew anymore. Yeah, he called me up about a year ago, said he threw with that shit. I was like, oh, man, I ain't even know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so See, y'all need shit. to call him up and get, y'all need to call him up and see what the hell going on with him. <laughs> man, yeah. See what he's doing stuff with ICP, I guess, now, from what I last I heard. <laughs> ICP. <laughs> I ain't so, never That's that's the uh the clowns, man. Oh, I know, insane clown posse. I'm just, I'm just laughing, man. It's just it's just funny that <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. I remember they was doing some shows with them not too long ago, a couple of years back. Yep, yep, and I think he's done some songs with them too, so Okay, it's okay. Kind of uh kind of interesting. So yeah, man, that's uh, that's that's wild. So you, now you're doing shows with these people, and you see them, and every it's all good, it's all love, it's not you know, no issues or you know like no hard feelings. Like, no, nah, hey, well, like I say, my my problem wasn't with the group. My problem was with Luke. Luke was the president of the company, so and it wasn't it was nothing personal. It was just business. Pay me my fucking money. I need my money. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. That's cool that 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 happened right after that too. It's like you're out, you're out, you know, you're 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 cleaning fucking shit out of a toilet, and then it's eight months later, you're 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 get your cash and you're rolling again, man. So after that happened in '93, uh, when would you did you put out? Uh, when did you put out your next album after you after you uh, after come the comeback? After the comeback, uh, I let fucking DJ Smurf brainwash me. Like you know, hey man, you know you got your lawsuit money. Let's crank your record company back up, you know. So I started, we left Itchy Barn, and I started my own company, Ben's Records. Again, I crunk it back up, and I made a re- an album called Recognize. And, and it's uh, Recognize, right? It's it's spelled Recognize. Yeah. And uh, what happened was the album was doing real good, but I don't know if y'all familiar with Big State Distribution, Shit, they filed bankruptcy and they owed me a hundred and a hundred and ten thousand dollars and they filed bankruptcy. Oh fuck! So now basically they don't owe you shit because <laughs> they're bankrupt. Yeah, right? so they go wow. they go my damn money down the drain. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was that was one record label situation that didn't necessarily pan out for you, huh? <laughs> nah, that was fucked up. <laughs> well, that was fucked up. <laughs> Let's get I guess into- like everything, man. You take your looks. Yeah. Well, let's let's get into yeah, the next. You know. uh, what I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was, we were just talking about you know like a, you take your lumps. You know sometimes you know can't win them all kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah. man. But let, yeah, let- man, you gotta you gotta keep it moving because you know I'm not gonna put no fucking pistol to my head and blow my brains out over no money. You know. You know you 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 lose that shit and keep it moving. Yep, you gotta keep going. It's just money. You know. Yeah. Yeah, you which, know, which is great to have, but not, but it's great to have your have your life. <laughs> Obviously, can't yeah. spend the money if you ain't allowed yeah. to spend it. You know, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's get on to our uh, our third song. What is that, Max? It's uh, Atlanta is the place to be. Who's this dude rapping on here with you? Oh, that's my partner. His name is Deando. Believe it or not, uh, I used to mess with his aunt and shit. You know, so <laughs> when he was. When he was young, he wanted to be a rapper. So when he got older, I felt since I used to kick it with his aunt that I owe him this favor to do this song with him. So I produced the song for him. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still cool with the aunt? Yeah, yeah, we still cool. I haven't seen it in years, but, uh, you know, we still cool and stuff. Cool, cool. Oh, so that's... this is this is, uh, this off an album or is this a single or what's this off? That was just... That was just a single he he did to he put out a mid C D. So that was a single to his mid C D that he put out. Oh cool. Oh, okay. Well let's listen to that now that said Atlanta is the place the ATL is the place to be. Is that what it is, Max? Yeah, ATL. Yep. Yep. A- ATL. ATL. Atlanta is the place to be. All right, so we're we'll back in a couple minutes with M C Shady Chai D. Yeah, I can't speak. It's that it's that uh, Milwaukee's, that Milwaukee's best. best man. Taking, taking, it's taking control. M C Shy D, we're back in a few minutes, uh on nothing sacred interview. Old school beat. In the place 
to be. Atlanta is the place to be. I'm rolling with MC Shot D. For those of you that don't know, I go by the name of the unknown. Atlanta is the place to be. I'm rolling with MC Shot D. For those of you that don't know, I go by the name of the unknown. I'm off in the club looking for a real treat. Looking for a freak with a fat ass cheek. Shaped like Melissa, but looking like Trina. She told me her first name was Regina. I gotta get way up in between her. First gotta get her out this arena. A one night stand is the plan. I don't give a damn, I ain't her man. We can do it in the van, we can do it in the park. I don't give a fuck if it's out in the dark. We can hit the hotel. Hope she can fuck well. Hope she can suck well. Hope she can buck well. Yeah, I hope she like girls. Yeah, I know she like girls. Yeah, that is the world when you're living and chilling in the ATM. Atlanta is the place to be. I'm rolling with MC Shot D. For those of you that don't know, I go by the name of the Unknown. Atlanta is the place to be. I'm rolling with MC Shot D. For those of you that don't know, I go by the name of the Unknown. Atlanta is the place to be. We're here on the Nothing Sacred interview with MC Shy D in the building. What's going on, man? Yo, man, I'm just chilling out, hanging with y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so after, yeah. yeah. So after this song, so when did that song come out? What year did that that uh, Atlanta is the place to be? When did that? What year does that released? Uh, 2014. Oh wow! So so that's a newer stuff. So you've got some newer stuff out, obviously. When, so did you have a? Was there a big break between in the 2000s where you just got another shit, or did you do a lot of stuff in uh in you know after the turn of the century? Or yeah, yeah. Um, I did a, I did. A, oh man, I forgot. I did another album uh called On the Road Again. I did that uh with uh my daughter's mom. It was a a duet album with me and her, MC Shy D and the Rhythm. The name of the album. Called on the road again, and uh, I produced that whole album, and uh, that was a pretty good album for me. I like that album. Hmm. And what was that? What, what year was that? That was around. That was around. Let me get my head right. My daughter wasn't born. That was around '98. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, '98. '98. Man. Okay. So the stuff with rhythm was actually the rhythm was actually older. Um, like I thought that was newer stuff for some reason. Nah, we did that years ago. I mean, I thought it wasn't even born, and she'll be 17 in December. God damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time flies, man. <laughs> yeah, it does. So after that, in uh, mid mid uh, early 2000s, uh, what did you do after that? What were you doing? Did you have a? It seems like a lot of the, a lot of people who started in the 80s and 90s had like a break or like a like a a dead period in, yeah. in the 2000s. Does that happen to you too? Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a real dead period. What I started doing, believe it or not, I, that's when I started DJing in the clubs out here in Atlanta. I started DJing, you know, around it, around different spots out here in Atlanta. That's when I started getting my, my DJ on. Huh. Mm-hmm. And do you still go by Shy D as a DJ? Yeah, yeah, DJ MC Shy D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, DJs and MCs. Okay. All right. 
Man, you know what's funny, though? Okay, now here's the thing, something I was going to kind of gripe about a lot, a little bit. But, you know, like these new kids that are coming up, you know, they they get a bunch of them together and they say that they're a label. And it's like, well, you're not really a label because you're not putting people out. You're just, you know, they're recording their shit and you're doing your shit. And because you're all friends, you're calling it a label. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I got well, a guy, I got a guy on my fr- friends list who does that. Yeah, I guess, I guess they are labeled like, for as under a name, are they under like a certain name? Yeah, yeah, they have a name. He just says, oh, they're on my label, but I mean, I, you know, he doesn't, you know, put them out or advance the money or do what a label's supposed to do. Well, labels, there's probably... Oh, okay. The, well, there's not really a thing anymore. You gotta remember, Max, that, that now labels really aren't... I mean, obviously they're still around, but... Um, but mainly, I mean, you can do your own shit now, man. You can produce anything on you want on your computer at home. You don't need you don't need a lot of that shit anymore, man. So, uh, right definitions and stuff change. I mean, labels now. I mean, it's not like you're gonna find somebody. I mean, you can you could do a paint a paint shop uh, and have a label labeled you know logo, and then you're like, there's your label right there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, that's the way they're doing it now. It's like basically. These major record companies want you to make a name for yourself and blow yourself up, and then they step in and give you the extra hand, you know? Oh, so that's why a lot of these guys are trying to do the, like, I call it the Rebecca Black Syndrome. You know, they're all trying to be, you know, none of them put anything out, but they just have, like, SoundClouds and YouTubes with a shitload of music on them. And it's like, okay, dude, you haven't moved any units, but you want to call yourself a, a label or whatever. Yeah, because these record companies now, that's the way they sign an artist. They they go and buy how many views you got on YouTube and how many hits you got on SoundCloud, and they're giving these young guys deals like that, so that's a new way of getting signed to make a label. Believe it. Oh, okay, so no more submitting the demo tapes. <laughs> no, no, man, you don't have to do any of that shit anymore. Days of that shit is over. Yeah, matter of oh. fact... Do you have, have you? Uh, what's your newest album, man? What's the newest album that you have that came out recently? Did you have anything that came out recently, or you got anything coming out soon? Or nah, I put I had put out a single in 2015, a song with me and a friend of mine called Michael Sterling. He's in that group, that reggae band called Encycle that made Bad Boys. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, he yeah he's an R&B singer, so I put out a song called Southern Heat with him in uh, 2015, and that's the last thing I did for us. Record wise, you know. Are you coming out? That's with... the... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You know. Oh, I was just gonna say that that's the group that did uh in tune, right? Ready Steady? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My man, he played bass for that that band. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah. We we saw that cruise control when we were roommates. Remember that video was on? There were kids and we we're like, Hey, this is pretty dope for some kids. Ready steady, really. Yeah, it was at night. They played it on one of those late night video shows, and we were watching. And we were like, "Hey, man, this is pretty good for some kids." It was like oh, me, nah, you, and Mac Metro. <laughs> nah, these guys are old. These guys are old as hell. Well, this was a, you got to remember. This was in the '90s, man, like late '90s when we were when Cruise you, Control and I nah, were roommates. These guys are older than that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Uh, yeah, I remember Cops. That yes. show used to come on called Cops. Yes. Oh yeah. And it's the always go, bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? Yeah, he was the bass player for them, Max. He's not the bass oh, player. Oh, inner, inner Circle. Inner Circle. Yeah, Inner Circle. Okay. My bad. I thought you said In Tune, which was an R&B uh, kid group. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, nah. Inner Circle. These guys, these guys, <laughs> and they sissies and shit. So okay. he did. He did. He did the uh, the theme song to your favorite show ever, man. So I, I, you know what? Yeah, that's like my favorite show, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I used to like cops too. Used to watch cops all the time. Every Saturday night, we'd hang out, get some beer, and uh, watch cops. That's that was our old thing we used to do for a long time. But um, so anyway, so uh, so you're not doing anything right now. You're not you're not making anything new. You got any plans? And if you are, are you planning on doing it on your own, like like using your own like computer to make it, or would you, would you still be using a studio, uh, like for your last song? Did you do it in, in in studio, or did you actually just do it as a as a home project? Well, what I did was uh. I recorded it here. I did it on my computer, but I sent it down to Mike because Mike got a, he got like a $100,000 studio in his house. Mm-hmm. And he basically did the mix and everything for it, you know. I recorded my part here, did the beat here, and I shot everything down to him, and he mixed and mastered everything for me. 
Oh, cool. Hmm. So that's that's so big, this yeah. This life's wrap thing that we're we're gonna the last thing that we're gonna go out with did did uh, what is that? Is that supposed to be part of the new album or? No, nah, that's just something. That's just something. I was I heard I heard a song that beat. Well, I made two versions. I made a I made a Isaac Hayes version, and then I made a version with just a bass line in it. That's yeah, a that's... record by Walker. That's a a record by Waka Flocka called Fifty K. That Waka Flocka made with Ti. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So yeah, y'all can look it up. The song is called Fifty K, and I I was so amused by that bass line. I said, shit, I'm a I'm a loop this shit and do a rap over it. <laughs> so so they sampled the Isaac Hayes because actually that's uh that's the one we're going to play is the one with the Isaac Hayes sample in it. Yeah, I did that. That's the one I sampled. I okay. did that with my drum machine. The Isaac Hayes version, I sampled that in my drum machine. I just sampled it straight into my drum machine. But the the other version, I got that from a Waka Flocka record. Do you plan, oh, okay. You plan on releasing anything else anytime soon, or what? What else? What's going on? Where can people find your shit at? What What are you up to, man? Uh, any places people can can go to to get info on what you're doing? Yeah, well, I got I re I re. Uh, Gotta be tough album back out, coming correct in eighty eight, recognize the Don't Sweat Me album and my On the Road Again album. So I got five albums out on iTunes and all of that. You know, I'm going through tune calls, so they get your shit everywhere. So I got all my old stuff back out before as me trying to make anything new now. I think it's a rap for Shy D. Oh. <laughs> so you're you're just kinda of playing shows once in a while and, and that's it, huh? Yeah, well, you know, uh, a guy, believe it or not, I'm working on a tune a song right now, excuse me, with these two guys out of uh, California, Oakland, California. Uh, they got a little up-tempo tune, and um, anybody want to do a guest, I mean, uh, you know, a song with me, I'm I'm open to that, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm working on a song right now, but as far as me saying, damn, I want to be 1987 Shy D again, that shit ain't going to happen. <laughs> I hear you, so no, <laughs> no more full-length albums. You don't really need to do that anymore, though. You can just throw a single out here and there, and it can be the same thing at this point, considering the way that the, the, the business is now from what, you know, I mean, you can just, like, have a song every once in a while, throw it out there, see what happens with it. Um, but, yeah, I can see that, man. It, after a while, you're just like, man... I, it's not the same industry. You're not the same person. You got different priorities, you know, because that's Yeah, you know, uh, you could kill your legacy like that, too. You know what I'm saying? Right. Trying to come back. Well, I like the fact you've kept it, you know, even lyrically, you still had kept that shy D feel to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't overcomplicate your lyrics, and it's just it's straight up. It's just MC Shy D. Yeah, definitely. You know, I've never been... A LL Cool J type rap. I never had good lyrics like that. So, you know, like I said, I'm just going to do what the fuck I do. I'm not going to be trying to be this person or that person. No, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar. I'm going to be Peter MC Shadi Jones. That's that's cool, though. You, you, kept your, you kept your style. Like, we know it's you, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Yep. That's, uh, that's a way to evolve, man. Like, uh, you know, and, and a lot of the rappers don't do that. They try to switch up and change up with the times, and it just doesn't, like you said, you could kill your legacy doing that because it just doesn't sound right. Yeah, you know, because one thing I tell my lady, I, I be telling my lady this all the time. I say, hey, once your fans heard you, they don't only expect that out of you. Your style ain't going to never change. You know, they're going to be like, it's your style is. You know what I'm saying? I told my lady... You know, once you don't heard a rapper, I don't give a fuck how many songs get on. He gonna sound just like himself when he made his first song. Mm -hmm. Man, <laughs> that's that's yeah, that's that's real. A lot of a lot of people should follow that more. I think. You know. Yeah, me yeah. too. I think that too. Well, it's like KRS One. You know, I mean, you listen to him now, and he still sounds like KRS One. So I I think that's cool. He kept, he kept. Yeah, he kept, he still a battle rapper, KRS One, <laughs> and a knowledge rapper too, conscious rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I be hearing him. I heard him say something. He got a new album out, and I heard him say something about Trump. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, actually was funny. Oh, here's a little fun fact. Um, I was watching Yo MTV Raps back in '89, and I think it was uh, the Beastie Boys was on there, and they they were at this um, they were they were doing the show from some restaurant. 
And they said they did this competition with how many, what rapper could eat the most eggs. And you actually won. I think you ate like 12 eggs or something. Yeah, it was sunny side up eggs. They couldn't believe that shit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, we was in a... Look at me like, I know you ain't about to eat that. I said, yo, I got fuck coming. So, you know, I, like I said, I ate 12 and they couldn't fucking believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know, we may have to, because uh, I'm a big eater myself, so if you ever do make it to Vegas, you and I may have to get down on a little competition of eating. <laughs> yeah, we could, def- we could definitely do that. How much you weigh? Uh, well, now I'm I'm down to 218. I weighed myself this morning, but I was 240. <laughs> oh, I'm 5 feet 6. I weigh 280 pounds. Shit. Yeah, I'm 6 foot, and I was 240. But uh, I've been on this Nutrisystem diet, man, and it actually works really good. And uh, I've dropped, uh, it, I've been on it for a month and a half, and okay. or not, not, not even a month and a half, but like a month and a week, and I'm down to 218. So my goal is 210. It's, it's called Nutrisystem diet? Yep, it's the men's Nutrisystem diet. Shameless plug, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 I never heard of that, but uh, I ain't trying to lose no fucking weight. <laughs> i kind of had to I man mean, I, was, I was feeling it you know i mean if it come off you know i need to i got diabetes and everything i got all kinds of shit you know what i'm saying but my doctor every time i go to my doctor every three months you know she tells me i need to lose weight but you know I, I get started i get a good groove going for about three weeks then i stop you know mm-hmm. wow yeah, well, that's, uh, you know, it's one of those things, man, you just kind of, like you said, I mean, I, I don't want to have to contend with diabetes, and, you know, there there was a point where I'd be walking through, like, a mall with a friend or something, and I'm sweating and out of breath and all kinds of shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck this. Yeah, I hear you. So, plus, I got sleep apnea, so, yeah, man, I had to do something. So, you know, it was yeah, just yeah. one. Yeah. But once the diet's over, shit. When you're in Vegas, we will definitely do this this competition, man. This uh, egg eating competition. Shit. You'll be back at the 240 <laughs> again. Well, anyways, <laughs> let's let's get into our final song. Thank you, thanks a lot for coming on, man. Uh, MC Shy D, uh, if you have any, uh, do you have a Facebook page or any kind of page that you go you want to go to, uh, or any kind of um, uh, like just, I- right. I- just iTunes? You said right? Your shit can be found on iTunes. Yeah, Sp- yeah. Cool. Spotify or just iTunes. Cool. it's on everything okay cool well just look up look your look your look them up on the internet uh anyways uh this has been the nothing sacred interview once again our final song is going to be uh life's rap uh, anyways i'm cruise control i'm maxwell silverhammer and, and i'm mc shot d there we go <laughs> and that's, that's the story, the story there. there bitches, bitches. <laughs> life's rap mc shy d the nothing sacred interview You can't believe I'm back on the scene A lot older and bigger, y'all know what I mean Representing for the grown when you hear my voice Had love for the game, so I had no choice So I got on the mic and I went for broke People started talking, saying that I ain't no joke I started doing shows all around ATL And my name got bigger in the ATL Made a record and started going state to state Big money in my pocket and it felt great can't front, yo, my ego got a little big Different girls in my bed after every gig Life's great, then baby started popping up My dad said, yo, son, you fucking up I didn't listen to La crew, kept throwing dick Paying child support, had a nigga feeling sick So don't do the crime if you can't do the time 18 years for support, that's a lot of time Four down and I only got one to go And if I make it, yo, I win out like a pro Most niggas don't even take care of one Around town talking about that ain't his son Till that test come back and it's positive Now what player are you gonna give? Some money or you're gonna be a dead beat Hey, yo, it's real fucked up off in the streets These hoes fucking hoes, niggas fucking niggas Black on black crime and everybody's doing time Easy to do wrong, hard to do right 
So I post up at the crib and I just write About situations that I see every day But in the end you forget that you gotta pay But you don't care, all you wanna do is ball out To one day, yo, your fucking ass fall out Too many drugs in your system, body couldn't take it EMS showed up and said you're not gonna make it Mom couldn't take it, so she also fell out Heart couldn't take it, so she also checked out Two gone laid out on the concrete Real shit talking over this dope beat Gotta keep it street and let you know the real deal Give it to your raw and let you know how I feel I'm feeling that this world is coming to an end People crossing out fam and killing friends Cops shooting us just because our color's black Killing, killing niggas, shooting niggas in the back True facts coming out my fucking mouth So don't try to sleep when you come south Cause I could keep going on and on and on Rockin' 30 years later since my first born. Mom, 